Hey guys, I am back in the kitchen again. That's how it goes around the holidays. Lots of cooking and baking to do. Today I'm gonna to be making some sweet treats to put into some gift boxes for my neighbors and friends. And there's a few different things I wanna make. I know that I wanna make a sweet bread recipe. It's something that my mom used to make around the holidays, and so it's very nostalgic to me. So I'll be making the same recipe, uh, one variation as a cinnamon sugar bread, and then one variation as like a chocolate. And something that's a tradition that I started is pizzelles. They're a really thin, really crispy cookie. They're perfect with coffee. And if I don't make a batch of pizzelles, it just doesn't feel like Christmas to me. So those two things are essential. <laughs> but I'm also gonna try some butter cookies. I came across a recipe that I'm excited to try. And if I have time and energy, I might also make some oatmeal lace cookies, but We'll see. I don't know if I want to commit to that tonight. So the first thing I'm going to do is get the bread going. I want that to be able to rise and do its thing while I'm working on everything else. And ideally, I would have made a starter either last night or this morning, but I just don't have my stuff that together. And that's okay. All of these recipes are also going to be down in the comments for you if you want to try them out. To get the bread started, I'm gonna put the yeast in warm water with sugar and potato flakes. I know that sounds like a weird one, but it's technically a potato bread, so there's a little bit of potato flakes in the starter. Trust me, it's not weird, it's delicious. Oh, I'm definitely gonna need a bigger container. <laughs> Maybe? We'll make that work. I totally just guessed on the amount of yeast. I don't know. I don't buy packets like a normal person. I buy this whole freaking jar. <laughs> It'll probably work. While that yeast mixture sits off to the side for a minute to do its thing, I'm going to put together the rest of the ingredients, which is basically flour, an oil, salt, and more water. Also, this is a double recipe, so if you see me measuring an obscene amount of ingredients, that's why. I don't think I've ever measured 12 cups of flour out in my entire life, and I am uh, realizing that I'm definitely gonna have to do this one batch at a time, because there's no way that I can mix everything <laughs> in my little KitchenAid mixer. So, I'm gonna readjust real quick. Okay, there was an event. <laughs> salt, I always add a little bit more salt than the recipe calls for. and melted butter. And then the yeast mixture we started with. I'm gonna mix this pretty well with a dough hook attachment on the KitchenAid and then I'm not gonna do any stretching and folding or anything like that. I'm gonna let it do its bulk rise until it's about doubled in size and then I'll divide it into the actual loaves. decent so this will be it'll be pretty sticky um, that's okay that's what it's supposed to look like just have faith in the process and now I'm just gonna whip up that second batch of bread real quick I'm 
Okay, both batches of bread are gonna sit over by the stove for at least three hours to rise. We'll see how quickly or how slowly they go. Next up is the butter cookies. I have not made these before, so I have no idea <laughs> if they're gonna turn out, uh, but I'm gonna give the recipe a shot anyway. I think it'll be just fine. It starts with butter, which makes sense for butter cookies, and by the way, if you're looking for a trick to uh, soften your butter, I don't own a microwave and so it's really difficult for me to get butter softened. This is probably a little too soft. But you can just stick it in a glass of warm, not hot water and it'll soften them really quickly. I did this like five minutes ago and it is, it's squishy. Both sticks of butter, sugar, and powdered sugar. I don't know why it needs two kinds of sugar, but the recipe says, and I'm gonna follow instructions for once. And then I'm gonna beat that basically until the sugar and the butter are fluffy. Then in goes the egg. And the dry ingredients. Another little tip, I always sift baking powder and baking soda whenever I add it to recipes. There's nothing worse than getting a chunk of either one in your cookie. So, super easy to do, and then it gets rid of these little chunks that you definitely don't want in your cookie. Trust me, it doesn't taste good. Last thing is some salt, and then mix it together. This part you wanna do just until it's combined. You don't want to um, beat your cookie mixture too long because it'll start to make it tough. And looking at the texture of this, it's a lot thicker than I thought it would be. And I really want to try to pipe this. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of milk to thin it out a bit. And cross my fingers that that works. I don't know, man. It still looks really thick. <laughs> I might be ruining this recipe. Only one way to find out. Okay, that looks, that looks like I'm maybe good, but I don't want to thin it out anymore, so. We're gonna roll with this. I do wanna to try to prep these out just to make them a little bit more aesthetic, but I cannot for the life of me find my piping bags. I put them somewhere when I moved and I don't know where they are. So there's a couple makeshift piping bags that I'm gonna try. Part of the reason that I wanted to thin this out is because when you use a Ziploc bag with a tip, it has the tendency to either push the tip all the way through and like ruin the bag or it has a tendency to pop on the side. So if this doesn't work, then I can try a parchment paper cone, but I've never done parchment paper with a tip before, so. I'm just gonna mess around, <laughs> see what happens. Oh my gosh, I'm so skeptical. Yep, <laughs> that's not gonna work. Take two. Let's see if parchment paper is <laughs> any sturdier. Okay, it works. I just need to work on my piping technique. Yes!
These are pretty good. They're not very sweet, so they're not gonna be to most people's taste, but I like them, so I'll give them to a handful of friends that I know will enjoy the not so sweet taste of it and keep some for myself. They're definitely buttery. Um, it's kind of a buttery aftertaste. And I'm also going to dip these in some chocolate. I have that going on a double boiler on the stove. So they're not done just yet. Also, these ridges would be much more pronounced if I hadn't thinned that batter with uh, milk. But you could not convince me to make these again without getting a piping bag because that whole process was uh, not easy. Okay, the dipping method looked terrible, so I'm changing it up and I'm gonna drizzle the chocolate instead. And make a huge mess in the process. Gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, I would much rather eat these than these. They look like Halloween toenails or something. I'm, I'm not about it. Okay, back to your recipe I'm familiar with. <laughs> The bread has risen and I really should have greased this plate because the dough touched the top. But it's definitely doubled in size and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide it in half so this will make two loaves and then the other bowl will also make another two loaves. And I will roll each of those out, put the goodies on the inside and then roll it up. So, I'm gonna get to it. <laughs> I'm gonna make this batch filled with Nutella. I've never tried this before. I'm pretty sure it's gonna work. <laughs> so, even if it doesn't work, there's no way it could taste bad. Now I just need to roll it up to make a loaf. And I'm going to try to actually cut this down the middle long ways and sort of intertwine it with itself to make a cool pattern. Again, <laughs> never tried this. <laughs> so I'm just gonna do it. I was hoping the sides would be more open so you could see like the layers of bread and chocolate, but that didn't quite happen. That's okay. So all I'm gonna do is just twist them into each other. I think I'll start in the middle so I don't have to carry too much bread over at once. So, and then you just scrunch it together to make it loaf length. Okay, that still looks cool. All right, now I gotta figure out how to lift this into a loaf pan. <laughs> how do I do this? Ooh. It helps to have a lot of really random kitchen gadgets. <laughs> I have this cake carrier flipper thing that I never use except for right now. I 
don't know, man. Smells very precarious. Okay, not bad. It'll bake up and do its thing, and I think it'll look good. With this second batch of bread, I'm gonna do something very similar, but instead of Nutella, I'm gonna do cinnamon sugar. So I'm also gonna split this one in half, I'm gonna roll it out, and I'm going to put cinnamon sugar in it, roll it up into a loaf size, and I think I'm also gonna cut this in half and do this spirally thing, because it's just cool, why not? Every time I make this, it's more cinnamon sugar than you think would be necessary. So, whatever that means to you. Moving on to pizzelles, which is what I think is the fun part. <laughs> I have my pizzelle iron heating up over here and I'll show you guys uh, what this looks like closer up when we get to that point. Pizzelle recipes usually call for a star anise flavor and I don't particularly care for that licorice taste. So what I usually do is throw some citrus zest in there uh, lemon works great, orange works great, mandarin works great, and so that's what I'm going to do today. Sometimes I make chocolate ones too, but I have a lot of other chocolate stuff going on, so I don't feel like I need to uh, add that to the mix. I've been making these for like, I don't know, six, seven years now, but I feel like every time I go to make them, <laughs> I forget just a little bit, because I only do it once a year. I only do it at Christmas. It is very much a Christmas cookie to me. So let's see if I remember how to do this. All right, first thing is eggs and sugar. And this gets beaten until it's kind of fluffy. Nice and pale yellow, so we'll add the vanilla. And some melted butter. Mix those in. And sift the flour and baking powder together. And the recipe doesn't call for salt, but I'm gonna throw a little bit in there because, in my opinion, salt should be in everything. Not too much though. All right, so the sifted flour goes in with the rest of the ingredients. And I'm gonna throw just a little bit of this orange and lemon zest in here. It's not measured. <laughs> About half a teaspoon. <laughs> and just because I'm feeling it, I think I'm gonna add just a squeeze of lemon. 
Now it's time for the Pizzelle Press. So it has these designs on the inside. One side looks kind of checkered and then one side looks like a flower. So this is hot, this has been preheating and every press is gonna be a little bit different but mine has a light down here and when it's heating up, this light will be on. When it turns off, it's telling you that it's ready. So I'm gonna throw the first ones into the press. It is a little bit tricky just because it goes so fast. So these only cook for like 35 to 50 seconds. And if they go not enough and they're not done and if they go too much and they get burnt. So the idea is to put about a tablespoon of batter on each. And each press is gonna be different. I find that mine press the best when I don't put it directly in the middle. I kind of put it out diagonal to the side. Just a weird little quirk. Press it down, lock it, and then I start my timer. All right, it's been about 50 seconds. And there they go. So just pick them up real quick with a fork and toss them onto a cooling rack. This one's got a little toasty, but all good in my book. I am tapping out for the night. <laughs> I've been up for almost 20 hours straight, so I need to get some sleep. I'm gonna package all of these up tomorrow and get them out to neighbors and friends. <laughs>